Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We just did some long division. Now we're going to do some synthetic division, which is a much quicker way to do some of these problems. Uh, we'll do it sort of the long way, and then I'll show you this other trick we can use for synthetic division. So for long division, I'm going to go ahead and put my x minus 2 on the outside here, and then I'm going to put my dividend, the numerator, underneath x to the fourth. But remember, you don't want to have any missing term so i'll put a zero x cubed in there minus seven x squared plus nine x okay so for long division i'm trying to figure out what i want to multiply x by to get x to the fourth so that'd be x cubed and now i go ahead and distribute that get x to the fourth minus two x cubed flip your signs minus plus goes away that gives you two x cubed minus seven x squared and now we do the same thing so x times what gives you two x cubed that would be 2x squared. Distribute that, 2x cubed minus 4x squared. Flip your signs, negative 7 and positive 4 make it negative 3x squared. Drop the 9x. Let's keep going. x times negative 3x will give you negative 3x squared. Distribute that, negative 3x squared plus 6x plus minus 9 minus 6 is 3x and then one more time x times 3 will give you 3x when i distribute i get 3x minus 6 flip the signs and you get negative 4 so the remainder is negative 4. now that's doing it using long division what i'm going to do is the similar idea here using synthetic division so for synthetic division what we're doing is, if you tell me that x minus 2 is what I'm trying to divide by, that's the factor. What I'm going to actually divide when I use synthetic division is what would be the 0. So if x minus 2 is a factor, what would the 0 be that goes along with that factor? And it would be 2. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coefficients of this dividend and I'm going to put them right here. But again, you have to make sure that you have any missing zeros. So we have the leading coefficient is 1. Then there is no x to the cube, so 0, then negative 7x squared, then 9x, and then negative 10. So if you don't put that missing 0 there, it doesn't work. Synthetic division doesn't work. So it's very important you remember that. Now, the way this works is you drop down the 1 to start, whatever this leading coefficient is, and now I'm going to multiply. 2 times 1 is 2, and that goes right here. And now I do it again. 0 plus 2 is 2. And now I multiply. 2 times 2 is 4. Add negative 7 and 4 make negative 3. Multiply. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Add 2 times 3. Multiply. Negative 4. Like, well, how does this help me? This doesn't look anything like that. You're right. It's kind of like a magic trick. But what happens is you get these coefficients, which if you look, 1, 2, negative 3, 3, they're right there. So, since we started with a degree 4 polynomial, then my quotient is going to be 1 degree less than that because I divided out one of these factors. So my quotient, instead of x to the fourth, will be a 1x to the cubed, and then plus, you, this is descending order, so x cubed, x squared, minus 3x, plus 3, and on the end, you get the remainder negative 4, which I'm going to write it how we've been doing it, quotient times divisor, the divisor was x minus 2, and then plus the remainder, negative 4. Okay? Quotient times divisor plus remainder. It doesn't matter how you get there. Look, here's the quotient. Here's the quotient. Divisor is x minus 2, x minus 2. Remainder, negative 4, negative 4. So we get the same answer two different ways. Synthetic division doesn't work all the time. It only works when you have a leading coefficient of 1. But when you have a leading coefficient of 1, synthetic division is nice. So let's do a couple more. So we're going to try and divide by x minus 7. That means our factor is x minus 7. The 0 that I'm going to actually test is 7. Now I'm going to put my coefficients. 1, x to the 4th, negative 6, x cubed. There is no x squared, so I'll put a 0. Then negative 40x, and then positive 33. One little check you can kind of do. If this is degree 4, you should have 5 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's because you also have the constant term on the end. So the x to the 0 is going to make it one more than what you have. So if that helps you kind of remember that, hey, sometimes you're going to have missing zeros. If it's degree 4, you have one more, you'll have five terms when you do your division. So 
Let's drop down the 1 and get this thing started. 7 times 1 is 7. Now I add. 7 and negative 6 make 1. 7 times 1 is still 7. Now I add. 7. 7 times 7 is 49. 49 minus 40 is 9. 9 times 7 is 63. And when I add that, I get 96. So this is a degree 4 polynomial. That, my, that means my quotient is 1 less than that. So this is 1x to the third plus 1x squared plus 7x plus 9. That's my quotient. I'll put my divisor there, x minus 7, and then I'll put my remainder on the end, plus 96. Quotient times divisor plus remainder. And there you go. Okay, this is degree 4, so I should have 5 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Good. I'm going to plug a 3 in, because remember, if the factor is x minus 3, what you're going to actually divide would be to 0, so 3. Now I put my coefficients in, 2, negative 11, 15, 6, negative 18. Drop the 2, start to multiply. 6, add, negative 5. Multiply, negative 15, add, 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 6 plus 0 is 6. 3 times 6 is 18, and you get 0. Wait a minute. That's kind of interesting. So, quotient is 1 degree lower. So if this is degree to the 4th, we'll say 2x cubed minus 5x squared. You can write 0x if you want, but I'm not going to do that because it seems kind of silly, but I will put my 6 on the end. Quotient times divisor, x minus 3. Wait a minute. If you put the remainder plus 0 on the end, there is no remainder. If there is no remainder, then that means this is a factor. We actually just factored this polynomial. And if you look, this isn't factorable in any way we've ever done. So we're using a now a strategy here to factor polynomials that we've never been able to factor. We found that 3 is a 0 and that x minus 3 is a factor. And if you expand it all out, you'll end back up with a dividend, which means we just factored. So it's a new strategy, pretty powerful stuff. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take that idea to factor polynomials we've never factored before, knock them down a degree, and then we'll solve that lower degree polynomial. So we have a cubic here. We have strategies that might be more useful for solving a cubic. But that one we're going to go ahead and um, move on because I want to find a problem on the back that's a lot uh, nicer for us. So here you go. This says if you know 1, 0, you can lower the, the degree of the polynomial. You can essentially factor out that factor. And then you'll have, in this case, if it's a cubic, if I can knock it down to a quadratic, then I'm going to be in business because I can factor any quadratic. So what I'm going to do is, First, do synthetic division with negative 14. So they're telling me that that's a zero. That means that's what I'm going to plug in. I'm going to plug in negative 14 using synthetic division. And my coefficients are 1, 11, negative 150, and 1,512, which is big, but I feel like it's going to work out for us. So bring down the 1, then you multiply. That's negative 14. You add. Then you multiply. So 3 times 14, 42. That's negative 108. Now, 14 times 108. Well, look, I don't have my calculator in front of me, but if you tell me that it's a 0, I'm pretty sure that 14 times 108 is going to be, this is a negative, by the way. That's negative. Pretty sure it's going to be 1,512. 1,500, or 1,000, yeah, there you go. So those cancel out and you get 0 reason I'm so sure of that is because they told me it's a zero. Okay. So what I got now is a cubic. So now this is a quadratic. So it's x to the second minus 3x minus 108. So there's my quotient. Now my divisor was we did x plus 14 because the zero was negative 14. So that means the factor is x plus 14. But now I have a quadratic. This is x squared minus 3x minus 108. And there are numbers that multiply to negative 108 and add to negative 3. It's negative 12 and 9. So I'm going to split the middle. Minus 12x plus 9x minus 108. x, x minus 12 plus 9, x minus 12, x minus 12, x plus 9. So that is the factored form of this quadratic. I'm going to throw the third factor on there as well which is x plus 14, and say, look, I've got this thing completely factored now. This is three linear factors, and they can tell me the zeros. If you want to know where the zeros are, okay, the zeros would be at 12, 
at negative 9 and the one they gave me, negative 14. So we just use synthetic division to knock a cubic down to a quadratic. Then we solve the quadratic. And we can solve any quadratic. This one was factorable. But maybe next time it'll be quadratic format. But the idea here is you take one of the zeros and you make it make your polynomial into something more manageable. So let's try a couple more of these. First thing, we're going to plug in 4. So to plug in 4, because they're telling me that f of 4 is 0, that means that x minus 4 is a factor. So it's important you, you get the distinction there. Here I'm giving you a 0, which means we're dividing out this factor, x minus 4. Now my coefficients are 2, 3, negative 39, and negative 20. 2, 8, 11, 44, 5, 20. Hey, look, I got 0, which if you tell me it's 0, I better get 0. When I plug 4 in, I should get 0. Now I have 2x squared plus 11x plus 5. And my other factor is x minus 4. I'm going to write that out because I think it's good practice to write it out. Now, I'm not going to show all my split the middle steps. That's going to be something you can work out on your own. But I am going to factor this because there are numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 11. So to get 10, I would do, uh, let's see, I want a 5 here and then plus 1. So 2x squared plus 10 plus 1, that makes 11. There, there we go. So there's my factored form. Now, if I want to find all the zeros, the zeros would be at negative 1 half, negative 5, and positive 4. And then we could take those zeros, we could sketch the graph. It's positive and it's odd. They're all degree 1 multiplicity, so they all pass through at those points. So it's all kind of starting to come together now. Let's do a couple more. If they tell me that f of 9 is 0, that means that when I plug in 9, I should get 0. So I will plug in 9. And I'll use my coefficients, 1, negative 9, negative 5, 45. And I'll go ahead and do synthetic division. So multiply, f, multiply, f, multiply, f. So I get kind of a weird one here. This is x cubed. Now I have x to the second plus 0x. I'm not going to write that. Minus 5. That's my quotient. My other factor was x minus 9. So x squared minus 5 is not particularly friendly. But it's also not hard to solve. So what I'll do is, since there's no x to the first, I'll just say x squared minus 5. When do you equal 0? When x squared equals 5. Okay, so when does that happen? Well, if you square root both sides, you get x equals, and this is what you got to remember. If you square root both sides, plus or minus radical 5. So we have plus or minus radical 5, and then the 9 that they gave us. Those are all of our zeros. Um, radical 5 is irrational. Just leave it alone. You can't simplify it because 5 is prime. But make sure that you have plus or minus, because if it's degree 3, I should have 1, 2, 3 zeros. A couple more. So we'll plug in 6, because f of 6 is 0. And then I will use my coefficients. 1, negative 10, 19, 30. And then we do our synthetic division. So drop down your 1, multiply, 6, add. Multiply, negative 24, add, negative 5. Multiply negative 30 at 0. If they tell me f of 6 is 0, I better get 0. So I know I did that right. Now I have x squared minus 4x minus 5 for one of my factors. And again, if 6 is a 0, x minus 6 is a factor. Now to factor that, I need numbers that multiply to negative 5. So it would be x minus 5, x plus 1. Since it's a 1x squared, it's easy. And my zeros would be at 5, negative 1, and positive 6. One more. We'll plug in negative 4. Coefficients are 1, 6, 5, and negative 12. And then we just sort of go through this. Drop down to 1, multiply. Add, oops, 6 minus 4 is positive 2. Multiply, negative 8. Add, negative 3. Multiply, 12. Add, 0. So I have x squared plus 2x minus 3. And my other factor is x plus 4 because negative 4 is 0. And when you factor that, again, you should work this out. x plus 3, x minus 1. And when I, if I want to find the zeros, the zeros will be at negative 3, at positive 1. And then the one they gave us was negative 4. So negative 3, 1, negative 3. That's it for synthetic division. 
really the only thing we need to do now is take this idea and make the quadratics a little bit more uh, tricky to solve. So we'll have some complex zeros and things like that. But if you can take this idea of synthetic division, knock it down a degree, we'll find something that's always a quadratic, something we can work with. That's it. So be sure to hit that like and subscribe button.